Hello everyone! I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. I know this video is one long overdue, but I do thank you for your patience anyway. Had to give people enough time to avoid spoilers, or at least I'll pretend that was the real reason. Anyway, today we are covering the Life Sage class. If the funny thumbnail wasn't enough to give it away, this video will have spoilers in it, so please be aware and watch at your own risk. I've said it many times before, but healers got a pretty major buff in this game with the mechanic changes, and Life Sage is one of the strongest pure healers the game has to offer. This class can make it nearly impossible to die with how strong it is at healing, and in this video I want to discuss the Life Sage class, talk about its strengths and weaknesses, and showcase how I believe to use it most effectively. As always, if you enjoy these guides, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does really help me out so much. Let's get into it! I will be using Life Sage on Miyu as she is the s rank character for the class for fairly obvious reasons, but as usual it doesn't matter too much who you decide to use the class on, base stat differences don't matter too much, Technically, Yuni would probably be the best for having the highest healing power, although even with this class that probably doesn't matter too much just because of how much it can heal just in general. Let's go ahead and take a look at her skills. The first skill we have here is Steadfast Feelings. This will restore nearby allies' health on art execution. Amount healed is equal to 50% of users' healing. So basically, anytime you use an art, this is going to heal your allies for a little bit. In this case, that's going to be about 325, as that is half of your healing power. Not a ton, but not terribly insignificant either, considering how fast you can spam arts with a lot of these classes, especially the Agnes-based classes, which this one is. The second skill we have is Instant Regen. This is a 25% chance to heal using 100% healing power upon taking damage. This is a bit of a self-sustained effect that only affects yourself. It's somewhat useful, but probably not going to be the most impactful of your healing abilities. I'd say this is probably one of the worst healing abilities that you have. But still, every time you take damage, you can get 650 health back just 25% of the time. If you take a multi-hit attack that doesn't do that much damage, this could be a lot more impactful and even heal you if you're lucky enough. Our third skill is Enhanced Cellular Stimulus. This has a 50% chance on hit to deal 200% of your healing power as defense bypassing damage. So basically, this is one of the only effects where the higher your healing power is, the more damage you're going to deal. Now, this is not a powerhouse of offense by any means. So don't expect this to do too much damage. This would only be doing about 1,300, which is okay, I guess, but really, really not that impactful given the millions of HP a lot of enemies have. But it is a little bit of extra damage, and it is effectively functions as something that can go through defense values, which can be pretty nice in certain situations. It isn't entirely useless, but a support skill would probably be better in this case. The final skill is Abundant Oceans. This will reduce damage to allies by 15% and boost HP recovery by 15%, and it does not stack. It says it doesn't stack, so you can't have two life stages or put this skill on anyone else and have it stack with that. This is a great, great skill to have. Reducing all damage by 15% to all allies at all time is just massive. The boost to health recovery is nice as well, but the damage reduction I would say is more impactful. 15% is definitely not insignificant for that. And it can help you stay alive in a lot of situations you might not otherwise, especially when enemies start being able to one-shot you. It's really beneficial on a class like this that has such strong pure healing, just because it can allow your allies to survive with low health when they otherwise might not have, and you can heal back to full very quickly with this type of class. I think this is a very useful skill, definitely the best skill you have, and it's something that you should pretty much be running on every team, whether with the class or without it, since it can be set as a master skill as well. Speaking of master skills, for my first master skill, I am running Dance of Barrages. This will give me a 12% chance to keep recharge when using an art. It affects fusion arts, and it's really nice to have on healers. 12% may not seem like much, but it will activate a lot more than you might think, and it can be very nice to start spamming those arts and to get more skills out, get more um, talent arts out, stuff like that. I really like this type of skill, but I understand if you might not want to run this, since it can be pretty RNG, and RNG can be really annoying to deal with in fights. If you need a filler skill slot, this is always a good skill to consider. Healing License will boost amount of health healed by using Healing Arts by 30%. Truth be told, this is probably a little bit overkill, but if you want to just get those max HP heals from pretty much any situation, this can be a nice skill to just have and boost your healing pretty much as high as physically possible. For my final skill, I'm running All About Support to increase the number of field arts that can be set. This will allow me to charge Talent Arts up faster and provide more support to the team. Other good skills to consider, of course, are Essence of Ether and Swift Song, which are the other two party support effects. Those are always going to be useful to have and should pretty much be run on every single team. For arts, this class has a variety of decently useful arts that could be used depending on the situation. We first have Saber Slash, which will heal nearby allies when art hits to maximum 100% of healing power. This is a pretty nice general healing art that can do a decent amount of healing, probably around 1,000 with all the healing boosts that I currently have. 
I think this is an alright skill, especially because it has a recharge gauge of 3, or sorry, art, not skill. So it can be up very, very often with its recharge gauge of 3, especially since you get recharge gauge from canceling other arts, and you can just spam things very, very quickly with this class. Pretty useful, or just a bunch of extra burst healing to keep your characters alive without any kind of issue. Now, Redemption is an AoE healing art that will heal around the user. Now, this does not rely on hitting enemies to heal, and it'll also heal a lot more than just using Saber Slash. I don't know the exact amount or how much it works with healing power, probably just power multiplier by healing power if I had to guess. But it's a pretty decently sized heal. It'll probably do more than half of your current health at any given time. So it's a pretty nice skill to have just as a form of pure healing, just to always be useful and healing your allies. I'd recommend running this basically at all times because it's probably one of the main points of the type of class and set you're running. Water Lily is a set field. This should also be ran pretty much at all times because it's your only real way to charge your talent arc quickly. This is an area of effect around user. It has a recharge gauge of three, which is really, really fast. And it is basically a regenerate. There's some other regenerate fields in the game. This is probably the best of the regenerate fields as far as how much health it will restore overall. Just have your ally stand within it and health will restore gradually over time. This is definitely an art you should be running basically all the time, as I said before, just because of how useful it is to the team and how much it'll help you charge up your talent art faster. Hydro Blast is your damaging art. This has a 400% power multipliers, which is pretty decently strong. It has a recharge gauge of 4, which is also pretty fast, once again, has a chance of inflicting blowdown and a 50% chance to ignore defense. Now, once again, this class is not really an offensive powerhouse. This is not really an art that I would say is required by any means. It can be okay if you want to get some extra damage in with the class. It can ignore defense as well, which can be nice. But the overall offensive power of the class is just so low, you're probably not going to get much benefit out of this. So I don't really recommend running this over your other supportive and healing options. Aqua Mind is a very, very nice ability that will continuously heal nearby allies and will boost your own recharge speed by 25%. This makes it a very useful stance to have. There's not really any other stances you could really consider anyway. It has a recharge gauge of 5, meaning this is pretty much always going to be up all the time to boost your recharge speed even further. This affects Talon Arts, this affects your Kevis Arts. It's really, really useful to have. I like this art and would recommend it basically all the time simply because you're not going to have any better stance option and having the extra recharge is always going to be nice. For my Master Arts, I'm running Shadow Eye, not for the self-attack buff, but for the having aggro value. You are the healer, it is your job to keep everyone alive, so you want to make sure you're having your aggro and getting rid of as much aggro as possible so you do not take aggro yourself. The attack buff is not very useful, but there's not really any better options for arts, simply because Kevis Master Arts for healers are very, very limited, which is one of the main weaknesses for Agnes-based healer classes, unfortunately. But there are some good options like Advanced Cooldown, which comes from War Medic, and Multi Blast, which also comes from War Medic. So, Advanced Cooldown is another stance art. This will charge up your, not stance, field effect art, which will charge up your talent art faster. And it also provides defense up to the entire party for everyone standing within it, and can grant the defense up buff if the field expires before it runs out fully. Multi Blast is an additional healing art. This will give you more healing that you can use at any time that the art is available. Has a cooldown of 22 seconds, which is not the fastest, but it is an extra art to use for healing, and there's really no better options, as I said before, so I pretty much recommend running this. The talent art for the class is Divine Sword. This has a very high power multiplier of 1050%. Has a recharge gauge of 5. It'll ignore all enemy defense and will heal all male allies to a maximum 150% healing power. It's a decent healing talent art. I don't hate it by any means. It's supposed to be pretty offensive in nature, but once again, you're not really an offensive menace, so you're not going to see too much benefit from that. But the healing power can be nice. It's a good healing art, although there's probably better options if you just want the pure healing effect. And you might want to consider running different effects like Cry of Faith or Glittering Melody just because they're really, really strong effects. And if you want to take as much advantage of healing support capabilities as possible, those are going to be really good talent arts to consider running. My gem setup is pretty standard overall. I'm running both Soothing Breath and Lifesaving Expertise to boost both the power and speed of my revival of allies, which is always going to be very, very useful and provide a slight extra boost to my healing stat as well. These are always going to be useful gems because keeping your allies alive and healthy is going to be the key to success and battle in this game since you have so many allies and being able to revive quickly means you can do your job much faster and much easier. Empowered Combo is kind of just a filler gem here because I don't really know if there's any better options since I'm not really applying buffs to my allies with my current setup. And boosting healing any further might be just a little bit overkill so I might as well take some extra advantage of boosting my damage just from cancels. Like I said, you're never going to be an offensive menace but it is something to consider. You could also boost your block rate if you want some extra defense. You could boost your health if you want some extra defense that way. You could even reduce your own aggro generator by 45% if you want to reduce your aggro gain as much as possible. There are some 
plenty of options to consider here, but I like running this setup and it's worked pretty well for me, at the very least. For my accessories, I am running Solus Rings. This gives a pretty massive boost to healing by 40%, pretty much the largest possible boost. And if you're running a Life Sage, which is all about healing, this is going to be the best healer class for this item. Fraternal Badge will boost recharge speed by 50% when non-defenders are targeted. Now, I am running defenders in this party. You do not have to run defenders with this class, and you might even want to consider that if you are so confident in your healing that you'll be able to heal everyone with no issues. This is a very good item to consider. It can be very, very useful, especially with non-healer parties to just heal and charge up your arts as fast as possible, including your talent art. It'll also get the boost from this. And Devotional Necklace will recharge 100% of arts when you revive an ally. This also synergizes pretty well with having no tank parties, because if your allies get one shot, you get your, all of your arts back instantly upon reviving them. And this is just a really, really amazing accessory for pretty much every healer to run, because having all of your arts recharged is very, very useful. I think that's going to cover it for setup, so with all of that done, let's take a look at how to use the class practically. So, I'll be honest, there isn't really anything that's going to be super exciting in this section. I am going to be playing on hard mode, though, just to showcase the beneficial healing power of the class, because that's supposed to be the hardest difficulty, right? I only have Dreadworm at level 135. I never really... I was too lazy to get everything to max level, but it should still be effective enough to showcase how this works, at the very least. So, starting things off, nothing's really happening yet. He hasn't been able to hit me because driver combos are just too broken and overpowered. Probably should have taken Senna off the team if I wanted to really showcase this so I could hit us a little bit more. But at the very least, you can kind of see I've got these health fields going already. The 186 is not my health field. I'm, the 706 is my health field, actually. So the 186 is from the Trobador, I believe. And um, the, regen the other regenerate effect you're seeing is from Aquamind. So I don't know which one is 706 and which one is 747. I'm guessing Aquamind is 747. So that's the Regenerate buff, and then we have the Regenerate field with Water Lily. I'm going to be using that when I can, just to make sure I can charge up Divine Sword. I'm going to try to cancel into Divine Sword to take advantage of that effect as well, whenever I can, to get some extra damage out of that. I can get all my arts back instantly upon reviving any ally because of Devotional Necklace, so if an, enemy, if an ally gets one shot, which is the one thing I can't really do anything about, I do have that lifeline there. So... Otherwise, though, it's just a matter of keeping my healing up, which is not really that difficult to do with this class. Um, you can save Redemption in case someone gets hit and you really need it. Sometimes I try to do that. Like, right here was actually a good time to use Healing Arts, finally, although I'm stuck on the ground currently because of the topple, Force Topple. But, pretty easy to get some healing out of this. Two of my allies die there, just basically getting one shot. That's the one weakness of this class. You can't really do anything about enemies getting or allies getting one shot. But at the very least, you're able to keep everyone topped off pretty easily. The regen's outdoing the bleed effect. So that's actually really nice, because the bleed damage can be really annoying in this fight sometimes. But it hasn't really been an issue here at all. Everyone's basically been able to stay at full health. Uh, and allies are only really dying of these dangerous one-shots. We're also seeing that um, Neponic Champion's not really a very effective tank there, because Noah just got one shot as that. But oh well, that's just how it works sometimes. So the extra defense could also be pretty useful from advanced cooldown to just make my allies not get one shot if they're smart enough to stand in it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier here. I'm trying to cancel into my um, damaging art so that I don't really have much damage on this setup. I'm also running Shadow Eye. That does, I guess the attack boost is helping very, very slightly there, but I am running mostly for the aggro reduction effect as I've already stated. But you can just kind of see right here, we've never really been in any danger of dying. Even when someone gets one shot, everyone else is basically at full health at the same time, because the AoE moves aren't really programmed to just do as much damage. So whenever he is able to get anything off, any kind of auto attack or anything, gets cleansed pretty much instantly. So Infernal Flame here. You can see it's just kind of getting absorbed, mostly. I actually went down to 1 HP there, but that's why I used Divine Sword at the same time, because I saw myself getting targeted. But we're already back to full health pretty much instantly. So that's a cool thing about your talent arts. You can't go below below 1 HP when you're using those, so that's something to keep in mind, something pretty useful to have. Mio's pretty low on health now, so I'm going to be able to heal myself up here pretty easily. The extra self-healing I have, and um, Redemption, Water Lily, basically all these healing effects are going to allow myself to heal myself back up without any kind of issue here. So... This isn't really anything I can show off anything super amazing. You're not going to see any huge damage numbers in this fight, so I don't really feel the need to show off a super, super, like, long fight or any kind of extra fights here. 
You can kind of understand the healing capabilities and how this class works. It's basically just heal, revive, heal, revive, and it's pretty brainless, pretty free to use. And if you just need something to keep yourself alive against super bosses, this is a pretty effective class at doing that. So I'm probably going to chain attack in just a second here, which should be able to end the fight with my current setup. I'm not going to really be able to do much with the actual healing in the chain attack, though, so I'm probably going to maybe end this video a little bit early, although I'll show off a little bit of the chain attack, I guess, or just speed through it here. So the chain attack goes about how you expect. I just kind of use my strong moves. I set up a smash and we just kill them without any kind of issues even on hard mode because chain attacks are pretty broken and smash and chain attack especially is pretty dang broken. I don't actually get to really use Mio much on this chain attack and she's not really be able to do much anyway with her current setup. You can get some damage off. You can get some healing off on the chain attack itself which I did do early on in the chain attack. But I'm kind of just going to be using the uni tie on finisher here and using uni to smash when I can. So... I launch here to finish that round off, I get the extra damage ratio with Ashura, and then I use Uni to make sure I get a good finisher here. We get a lot of damage with Smash, it goes about how you expect. So, Life Sage, pretty good class. If nothing else, it can guarantee you get to the chain attack more than anything if you just want to have early chain attacks and kill enemies really, really quickly, which is definitely a viable strategy in this game. You're not going to get as much use out of it in the chain attack itself, but it's a very effective a class class for keeping you alive, especially if you don't need to keep yourself alive like a minute or so, which can be pretty useful for chain attacks, or for chain attack setups at least. But honestly, I don't really know what else to say, so I hope you guys learned something from watching this video. Please look forward to the last class guide on Royal Summoner coming out probably tomorrow if I can. This is a good class, probably not the greatest healer in the entire game just because other healers have more party supportive effects, but if you need a pure healer, just need to keep yourself alive, it's a very functional class and very fun to use, and everyone loves Nia, I'm sure, so people are probably going to use it just because of that. I think that covers it for me, so if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does really help me out so much. Like the video, comment down below, let me know what you're looking forward to or want if you have any other video suggestions, and I will try to read the comments and comment on them. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, thank you for all the support. And have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I'll see you back here soon.